Hey everyone, it's Jacob from Martin's Woodworking, and today I have a project that is very special to me. This is what started my woodworking journey. This is a live edge walnut coffee table here, and this project actually started a little over a year ago. As I went out and harvested this tree myself, I might have taken the term DIY, do it yourself, a little bit too seriously. But here we are, and it turned out great in my opinion, and I'm looking forward to doing more projects with the materials. I owe a lot of people some big thanks. My dad, family, friends, co-workers, everyone, thank you very much for helping me with this project. This is actually kind of a little pre-project as I plan to build a dining room table with these same slabs later this year. Let's see if I get to that or not, and hopefully I'll have a video for y'all. But for now, let's get to the build on this coffee table. To get this build underway, I started by breaking down the slab into two pieces, slightly over four foot in length. And then I figured out what live edge sides I wanted to keep as I will be connecting these two pieces and will only have two live edge sides. I ripped the slabs with a circular saw and used a level for a straight edge. These pieces are still rough cut so I will have to rip them again once I get it flattened but at this point I didn't realize the mistake I had made. If you are using a slab that is already flat then ripping them right away wouldn't be an issue. My slabs are just rough cut and not flat yet. I grabbed a chisel and began the process of removing the bark. This was definitely a messy process and a little time consuming, but it was fun trying to get the pieces to come off in big chunks. Once I had the majority of the bark off, I grabbed a wire wheel and my orbital sander and began removing the rest of the bark. Now we are flattening the slabs. As you can maybe see, I have already drilled some holes for dowels. That's because I had already attempted a glue up. Big mistake. I was planning to flatten the entire coffee table as a whole but because I had made my straight edge when my pieces were still rough cut and nothing lined up, that was a silly mistake on my part. But here we are flattening the two slabs on my little flattening sled, which is just a piece of melamine with a stop on the back side. Once one side is flat, I can remove it from the sled and run the board through normal as a planer flattens the sides opposite to the side. So if one side is flat, then it will reference off that side and flatten it to the same side. And I made sure to flatten both boards to the same thickness. Because of my earlier mistake I made, I needed to run my slabs over to my buddy Graham's house and use his table saw with his straight edge jig to give myself a good straight edge for the glue up. Big thank you to him. Now that things are flat and straight, I decided I wanted to use a few dowels in this project to keep things lined up. So I used my dowel jig and made a few holes for dowels. This will just keep things lined up better during the glue up. It's finally time for the glue up. Gluing up with a live edge slab is a lot trickier than just a normal glue up. So I took some extra steps to make sure I could keep things flat. The dowels were one step, and a board underneath to set the slab on rather than the clamps, and also some pieces of scrap 2x4 on the edges to protect the live edge, and also help the clamps with some even clamping pressure. I had to add a few calls on the end also to keep things nice and flat. About an hour later, I came back with a chisel and removed most of the glue squeeze out before the glue was too dry and I waited a few days for the glue to dry before I removed the clamps completely. With the glue drying, I can now move on to making the legs. I just made these legs out of 2x4s and cut them in half to give them a more thin look. I didn't do anything too crazy for these legs, I just made a simple rectangle style leg because I really like the look on live edge tables. This build is also my first live edge build and a practice run for my future dining room table. So these legs were a little bit of a second thought and something I wanted to keep inexpensive because I can always upgrade them later in the future because I'm going to be using threaded inserts to attach these legs. But on the dining room table I will be making metal legs and sharing that experience once it's complete. I'm just going to let the time lapse run here and you can see how I made these legs.
The color I'm using to paint these legs is the same color as I used to paint my geometric accent wall, the gold leaf metallic color. If you haven't seen the geometric accent wall video, I'll leave a link to it. And please take a moment to consider subscribing if you're not already. It's a big help to the channel and makes me want to keep putting out projects for y'all. I applied two to three layers of this paint, trying my best to cover up the wood grain. I wanted the metallic paint to give the legs a metal look, and I was very pleased with the results. While the paint was drying, I began to chisel out some of the decay on the slab and chisel off the rest of the glue from the glue up. Once I had everything chiseled out, I took the slab inside and mixed up a small batch of Total Boat tabletop epoxy and added some gold pigment. I filled all the cracks and the decay spots with this, making sure to pop the bubbles with the torch, and I let the Total Boat tabletop epoxy dry for a day. The next day when the epoxy was dry, I cut my table down to its final length. Once again using the circular saw on a straight edge. I took my time measuring to make sure things would be square on both sides and the final dimensions of the coffee table were around 3.5 feet long and approximately 18 inches wide. The table legs are dry and I'm marking out where I want my legs to be. I will be using threaded inserts to allow these legs to be easily removed. This is my first time using threaded inserts so I'm pretty excited to see how they work. I first drilled a hole into the legs that is the same size as the bolts I will be using. Next I marked a bigger drill bit for the threaded inserts to make sure I had the correct depth as I didn't want to poke a hole in the top of my coffee table. I will link down below to the threaded inserts and the bolts that I used. After I had the holes drilled for the threaded inserts, I began the sanding process. I'm going to be using Rubio Monocoat to finish this coffee table, so I'm only sanding up to 120 grit as recommended by the company. So this was a fairly quick sanding process, working my way up from 80 grit to 120 grit. I wet the grain before my final sanding of 120 grit. This is important so your grain doesn't rise up when you apply your finish. When I wet the grain, it was the first time I got to see what this table would look like. And I must say, it looks pretty damn good. The grain in this wood is amazing. I attached the threaded inserts with the provided Allen wrench and added a small dab of glue to help keep things in place. I made sure to tighten the inserts slowly, working them in and out, tightening them, and then backing them off, and then tightening them some more. I did this to prevent cracking in the wood. To prepare for the finishing process, I vacuumed off as much sawdust as I could from sanding, and then wiped the surface down with some shop towels and mineral spirits, letting everything dry completely before I started to apply the Rubio Monocoat. I'm using Rubio Monocoat Oil Plus 2C Pier with an accelerator. This is a 3 to 1 mix ratio, 3 parts finish, and 1 part accelerator. A little bit goes a long way with this product, and that's good because it's more of an expensive finish. I used two separate 10 millimeter syringes to mix my finish, and mixed up less than I needed. I wanted to make sure I didn't have a lot left over. This was my first time using this product, and I'm pretty sure I only used 30 millimeters of part A to finish both sides. I used a rubber scraper to spread the finish all over the piece and let it soak in for about 5 minutes. Then I removed all the excess using a shop towel to buff off the extra. I made darn sure to remove all the excess that I could because I've heard with this product you can't buff off enough but you can leave too much on. I repeated the same process on the other side. Rubio also suggests a 15 minute work window so I only apply what I could successfully apply and buff off in 15 minutes. Keep in mind I let my product soak in for 5 minutes. Rubio Monocoat is fine to handle after 24 to 48 hours, but it takes one week to fully cure. So I waited a week before I attached the legs to the coffee table, and with the legs attached to the table, I was able to do a final touch-up coat of paint, and this Live Edge coffee table is complete. It's crazy to think that I was able to take this from a tree to an actual piece of furniture. A full circle cycle, from harvesting the tree, getting the tree milled up, and waiting one year for the one-inch slabs to air dry. Then flattening the slabs with my planer, assembling the table. I'm so excited to make the dining room table from the bigger slabs, so please consider subscribing so y'all can see how I make that. And thank you for watching. Also, all the products I used will be linked down below.